I grew up in Canton, Ohio, the home of the Camp McKinley Bulldogs. I went down to the recruiting office in December of 42, and uh, Sergeant Major down there says, you you like, I believe you probably like football. And I said, yes, I do. I played in high school. I was on the varsity team at uh, Grant. And uh, he says, well, you'd, uh, you'd certainly love to play Marine Force. He says, uh, they do all kinds of sports there. So, a lot of physical activity. He says, you, I think you can get along just fine. So, my, within a period of about 48 hours there, I, <laughs> I had the full course. And, and uh, I was about to catch the train for San Diego. On September 15, 1944, Private First Class Arthur Jackson landed on the sweltering hot beaches of Peleliu Island in the South Pacific. He was just one man in an army of hundreds, but before their mission was complete, Private Jackson would battle heat, bullets, and bombs to save his platoon as an army of one. When we hit the beach, we landed in about seven foot of water. I looked down the beach in both directions, and it was on fire. It was just a mess. We uh, had the objective of clearing out the southern end of the island, and uh, the second day, we were held up stone cold on a neck of a peninsula, and the Nipponies were firing 37 millimeter cannon at us, and some automatic weapon. Every time somebody got up to move, they drew fire. My platoon leader came down the line. He said, Jackson, do you see that uh, shallow trench that uh, commences about 100 yards forward of our position here? If you could get forward into that shallow trench, we'd really have a foothold. We'd have a way of uh, eliminating the big bunker that's causing us so much trouble. Do you think you can do that? Well, yeah, I guess so. I took my pack off and my leggings. Loaded myself up with the grenades and the AR ammo, and I said, I'm ready. Well, I took off. I ran straight as a line as far as I could see for this trench. I got out there, I found out that trench was only about that deep. Well, it gave a person cover, but you had to keep your rear end down and you would be shot for sure. Well, they did fire uh, automatic weapons. I mean, it kicked dirt up. Boom, 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 across the grass in front of me, and they're just, uh, just uh, uh, unbelievably lucky that day. And I got up to this bunker, and uh, we had a couple of guards outside the bunker. And they had a skin hanging down at the doorway of the bunker. I could hear them jabbering in there. And I had a white phosphorus grenade, and I just threw this white phosphorus grenade in, and the smoke just poured out of that down. I could hear him coughing and hacking, and that gave me lots of cover. And I was thinking to myself, I'm gonna need some help up here. And so my squad leader came forward with a pack just chucked full of Composition C2 plastic explosive. And I just set that thing on fire, and, uh, and then I took off running. It was a bomb crater about 60, 70 yards, maybe at the most, and I took off straight for it and dove in. Just about the time I dove in there and covered myself up in a fetal position, honest to carry myself. Unbelievable amount of stuff went up. And when the dust all settled, there was no more bunker. They say I knocked out 35 of the enemy in that bunker. 35 men in there. The concussion just must have killed them instantly. You know, it just was just, I don't think anyone suffered in there at all. With the debris still settling around him, Jackson rose from his cover and headed toward the next enemy position. Working his way down the peninsula, Jackson launched a single man assault that claimed 50 enemy lives, destroyed 12 pillboxes, and determined the successful outcome of the operation. Jesus. To this day, I do not understand why they didn't vacate some of those positions, come out after me. I mean, they must have thought there was more than one person doing all this. I passed out back then, I fell flat on the back and I was heat exhausted to say the least. And when the troops came up, I said, God, I felt like I was a, a ball player, I just made the winning touchdown. 
uh, they pick, picked me up, pulled me to my feet, slapping me on the back and shaking me. Oh, Jackson, God damn it, boy, you did it, you did it. I had a nice reception in Washington. There were 14 in the group all together. Pappy Boynton, of course, he and um, Bob Bob Blackseat fame, he was with us, and uh, President Truman uh, presented it. And he told us all he better have the Medal of Honor than be President of the United States. I was always proud to excel in anything, and he told me that the most dumb host son of a bitch that I ever knew, you know, all those, all those buddies of mine, <laughs> you're crazy. I was uh, very strongly that I was capable of and, uh, I think that's why the three officers came down to me. I think with the two leaders, well, Jackson did do it. I didn't really know what the hell I was getting into, but uh, I'm just a damn good A-arm and had a lucky day.